Hey guys, welcome back to The Awakening Artist. My name is Dana, and today we're gonna to be talking about why many highly creative people can be self-destructive and how to channel this energy in a healthy way. So stick around to the end of the video and we're gonna talk about what it is that makes highly creative people sensitive, emotional, prone to destructive behaviors and how we can start to redirect this and really take ownership of it so that we're channeling all of this beautiful energy in a good way in our lives and our creative practice. So we've all heard the stories of like the famous musicians and the painters, the tragic stories about these artists who are extremely talented and they have so much beauty to bring the world, but they are prone to spiraling into like bouts of intense depression and um, abusing drugs, abusing alcohol, you know, overdoses, all of those kinds of things. And it seems to be quite um, a stereotype for artists that it's like the tormented artist, right? And we think about what makes these highly creative people have these self-destructive tendencies and why do they even happen, right? And what I connect to with this is that when you are a creative, when you are a channel of any kind, a musical channel, an artist, um, a speaker, an entrepreneur, a healer, whatever it is that you're doing and you're channeling, it's like you have the this circuitry system in your being, okay, that makes you sensitive to energies, that makes you sensitive to, um, to the subtleties. You know, if you're an artist, it's going to make you sensitive to the subtleties of perception you're going to perceive things a little bit differently you're going to be your it's like your energetic circuitry is more sensitive is heightened and we all have this circuitry within us but people who are actively practicing a creative passion of some kind it's like this is amplified and a lot of creative people as kids are the ones who are diagnosed with ADD ADHD it's like you know we as these highly sensitive creative beings and we're functioning and we're listening to all of these different energy patterns and sensitivities, we have these heightened sensitivities, these creative channels that are open within us. And a lot of times that's perceived as, oh, this, this child, this person can't focus. They can't do things in the, in the order, in the way that it has been taught and implemented. And it can make a lot of us feel like shitty about ourselves, right? But ultimately, if you are a creative person, it means that you are probably pretty sensitive and pretty emotional because what does it take to be a creative, right? It takes having these deep experiences that are first felt and, and processed and experienced within, and then we translate those experiences into a work of art, into a painting, into an object into a, a channeling of some kind. So, you know, there's, there's one way of expressing ourselves, which is uh, expressing our own and processing our own um, emotional experience. And the other way that I've connected to is channeling, right? Is calling in creative energies and higher energies. And you could say that is, it's still you, it's still your own process and it's filtered through your own unique emotional lens and your, you know, your, your, your unique perspectives that make you you. But when we're channeling, we're like opening ourselves to these higher frequencies to move through us and for these higher energies and concepts that are pure like source matter to come through us and to manifest themselves. And so that being said, like if you're an artist and you're doing this kind of channeling work, you're channeling your emotions, you're channeling your experience with subtle energies, you're channeling higher frequency guides and beings, then it's so important to know that like your circuitry system and your body is wired differently. You're wired to be this channel and this messenger and this interpreter of information. And so when we are taught to suppress that, to deny that, that that's not okay, that that's not right, that that's, you're not normal if you have these heightened sensitivities, then it's like we get afraid of our own gifts and our own sensitivities and our own abilities and we start to shut it down, right? And then we go towards 
drugs, we go towards alcohol, we go towards anything that's going to help us numb these highly sensitive creative circuits because we don't know how to use them, right? And for a lot of people, when we do start to become aware of the fact that we have these sensitive systems and that we can channel in these beautiful creations, um, and we start expressing that and letting that channel, it usually just opens up the sensitivities in the channel even more and even more. And then it's like, you know, like for me, I have been getting into the realm with this channel where it's like, I'll be getting so many downloads and so much information that it makes it hard to sleep that it's like I'm constantly getting like downloads, informations, visions. And I think that's common for a lot of highly creative artistic people. Um, but if we're not directing that energy somewhere, whether it's our own emotional energy that we're processing or we're channeling information, if we're not taking that and directing it into something, I believe that's where the self-destructive patterns can start to form because our system gets overwhelmed. Our circuitry system, our bodies, our beings get overwhelmed with this kind of information. And when it's not like going into something, think about it, it's just going into your being and then buzzing and staying there and it can manifest as like anxious energy. Um, it can manifest as you not being able to like to sleep at night, to feel calm, to feel at ease. Um, for me, I know it manifests as a hyperactive mind and not being able to turn off my mind, getting really critical on ourselves, right? Turning all of this channeling energy back at ourselves. And a lot of times it's it's in kind of a negative sense when we're analyzing ourselves and we're, we're picking apart our process because we have so much energy and we're trying to figure out what the fuck is happening. Okay, so now that we've established like what it means to be a highly sensitive, intuitive, creative channel and what that means for your energy system and your your I call it your circuitry in your body and you know the first step is it's like the first step is awareness right it's being aware that okay I think I do have these sensitivities and seeing that there's nothing wrong with you for having those that it's actually really beautiful and special and pure and amazing right but it's something that we need to accept that we are channels that we are creative that we're sensitive that we're emotional and once we do that then we can open ourselves up to like okay where can i put this now so now what it means to put this energy into something and i mean i'm doing it right now like i have all of this energy i was just channeling and painting all morning and i'm like Buzz. so i was like i should probably go make a video <laughs> and like get some of this put some of this energy somewhere so that it's not just pulsing in my being so that's a perfect example is like you start to feel like you have all of this creative energy or all of these sensitivities Okay, so instead of trying to numb yourself to it and trying to say like, you need to calm down and you need to suppress it and you need to do X, Y, and Z, why don't you figure out how you can express it? Whether that's, I'm gonna just give you guys some examples, okay? And these are pretty like simple, but you can take it as far as you want to. You can go and just put on a playlist and dance. Dancing is a way to move energy. Move your body, move your hands, like put that energy somewhere. You might find that you start kind of singing and channeling, speaking some light language, like light language maybe start coming through your hands. What I And what I mean by light language is these kind of movements where really we're just moving energy. So you can move energy in movement. You can move energy in sound, in song, in playing a new instrument and co being conscious of like these creative channels and the circuitry system that's moving through you, being conscious of that while you go to create something. You know, especially if you feel like you are channeling through a lot of emotional energy, a lot of anger, a lot of sadness, rather than letting that all build up within you, you don't have to be an artist to do this grab a canvas, grab a piece of paper, whatever, scribble all over it, write as many curse words as you want to all over it. Like I used to have these cathartic release painting sessions where I would get a, I would get a canvas, I would literally just throw paint on it and it would be like red and black and these deep colors. And then I would write like, one of the most powerful ones was I wrote every like the negative things that people has said to me growing up, like you're a freak, you're not normal, you're weird, you're, and I wrote those out to like bring them into the light and I express myself in that way. 
And so when we can start to use this creative channeling energy to put all this energy somewhere, then it can open up our channels. It can open up our being. We can sink deeper into the body. We can feel calm and relaxed. We can sleep better at night, right? So those were just a couple of examples. But ultimately, the bigger picture and the idea is that understanding that when we are creative people, we have these heightened sensitivities. We are oftentimes channeling in a high frequency of energy and that needs to be put into something, directed into something, or else we start to interpret all of this energy and use it maybe in self-destructive ways on ourselves, or we try to numb ourselves from this energy because it's too much, because it's too, uh, like, just too much, you know? <laughs> so I hope this video helped to maybe normalize some things that you've been feeling if you are an artist or a creator and you've had habits and patterns in the past of um, going into self-destructive behaviors, to numbing, to feeling like you're an outsider for being highly sensitive. I've been there, I've done all the things, I get it, you know, and I'm just here to tell you that there's nothing wrong with you. Um, embracing that you are highly sensitive, it's gonna be very liberating. And once you're aware of that process, being aware of yourself consciously channeling it into different things is going to be a really big life-changing practice for you as it was for me and I, I hope it is for you so if you enjoyed this video and you would like to um see more creative content uh <laughs> i'm not gonna edit this i'm just gonna leave it click the subscribe button i'm still figuring all this shit out um yeah love you guys you're awesome. Thanks for being here. And also, I am so stoked to film this video in my fuzzy sweater today. It's usually too hot in here, but it's literally like so cold outside, like 35 degrees. And I live in Texas, so it's it's like a it's an interesting cold. So anyway, um I'm happy in my fuzzy sweater and I'm just rambling now so you guys can end the video anytime. Okay, love you, like now, bye. <laughs>